so today we will talk about groovy what is groovy and uh, how it is so close and closely related with uh, java groovy is an agile and dynamic language for jvm as you are aware this jvm is java virtual machine and specifically for the code portability which java provides for multiple platforms and groovy has the strengths of java it has all the strengths of java but it also have additional features which are there in python ruby and smalltalk right so these modern programming features which are available to java developer it helps uh, for the new developers to just learn in in quick time so it also supports uh, domain specific languages and the other compact syntax so you can code or you can easily code uh, your language or program and you can easily maintain it as well groovy increases developer productivity by reducing scaffolding code uh, when developing this web or gui or database or console application groovy also helps you to simplify testing how because it supports unit testing and mocking out of the box it also seamlessly integrates with all existing java objects and libraries as i earlier told you that groovy is is java plus the capabilities of various uh, recent languages uh, power of these re recent languages groovy uh, compiles straight to java byte code so actually we are talking about portability power and additional feature so you can use it anywhere as you were doing uh, with java so let us take uh, an example to show how we uh, went or you know come down to groovy uh, from java this is our hello world program simple uh, string is there and we are just setting the string and getting the string this is hello world in java you are just trying to greet a uh, function which we have written greet so this psvm or public static void main what it is going to do we are making just a new uh, class object and just we are setting the name as groovy and printing it using this function this is your java code how you are going to write this hello world in groovy please uh, watch the differences clearly everything see i'm just changing the pages it's exactly the same it's completely uh, you know with no difference so what we are trying to do is we want to get rid of those things which are uh, which can be you know curtailed so everything in in groovy is public everything is public if you don't define them to be otherwise like protected or private everything in groovy is public and semicolons they are optional in java if you don't uh, place semicolon there will be a compiler error semicolon columns in groovy they are optional so how we can make uh, this groovy program you can just make a class hello world say string name don't put any semicolon you have a set name this dot name is your name again get name return name then you have string uh, greet this is a function so everything is we have just uh, relieved ourselves from this public and this uh, semicolon so everywhere this is public so why not to get rid of it everywhere you have to have a semicolon why not to get rid of it so the same same uh, function which we called as or the program hello world is now you know nice and clean second step is let's get rid of the boilerplate what is that 
प्रोग्रामिंग है जावा पिन रिक्वायर अ पेयर ऑफ गेट एंड सेट फॉर ईच प्रॉपर्टी लाइक गेटर एंड सेटर फंक्शन एंड वी नो अबाउट दैट एंड लेट ग्रूवी राइट इट फॉर यू और क्रिएट इट फॉर यू सो मेन वुड रिक्वायर स्ट्रिंग ऑलवेज एज अ पैरामीटर मेक दैट मेथड डेफिनेशन शॉर्टर विथ सम ऑप्शनल टाइप्स एंड देन प्रिंटिंग टू द कॉन्सोल इज क्वाइट कॉमन and can we have a shorter version to it like this we have this again the class string name then we have a function greet then static void we are saying main args okay see the huge difference between this line and this line static void main args and we are making an object and just saying set name ruby print line hello world dot greet then we would uh, try to introduce some dynamic types in groovy so we use this def keyword when you really don't uh, care about the type of variable uh, just think about it as a variable keyword in your javascript those who are aware of javascript we use var keyword and we really don't care about the type and groovy is going to figure out the type and which is known as duck typing so the correct type will be known by groovy so the result will be class hello world this will remain same this will be def this will be def this will be def so as we used or we were using var in javascript just to signify that it is a variable and the type you know you should take it by yourself so grivy is taking care of that def means you know which of type is there it will really know quick typing duck uh, duck typing we call it then we use a variable interpolation in uh, groovy we use variable interpolation so groovy supports this via gs strings gs strings so it works as you would expect in other languages also and you just have to prepend any groovy expression with dollar and these braces inside a string how this will remain same hello world string name uh, df we have introduced semicolon we have been we have uh, curtailed and um, you know private and everything we have uh, get rid of now this hello hello dollar name what i said just use or prepend this dollar with this braces dollar with braces and you know your work is done so this is how we use variable interpolation using gs strings we can also get rid of uh, some more uh, keywords this return keyword is optional it is the return value of a method will be the last evaluated expression if something is being returned you do not need to use this def in static methods okay the result will be something like this uh, same here same here in this if this is uh, some return type then why you need to type and uh, write this return just do this hello dollar name and that will be the return type then pojos or steroids what does it mean not only do these pojos we call them in you, you call them pojos or pogos in groovy and not only these uh, pogos write their own property accessors they also provide you with a default constructor with your named parameter okay so pogo support the array subscript like bean and you have a array subscript and dot notation also to access properties so these both are um, you know viable and you can use them the result will be something like this this you know class string name diff we have um, you know no return now and uh, this args because uh, for console applications and here we use uh, create what uh, ob an object which we have been creating and we use just this name colon groovy this is the way how you initialize it 
and then just using either the dot operator or this array subscript you can assign this groovy to the hello world with the name and just print ln and this will be printed via this greet groovy also supports scripts so even uh, when groovy com compiles classes to java byte code which is very essential for portability it also supports scripts and also they uh, compile down to java byte code scripts to the java byte code this is important so this uh, scripts they allow classes to be defined anywhere on them script also support packages after all they are you know they are actually uh, valid java classes only the result will be something like this class hello world string def greet this you know and now you have uh, def hello world you have made a uh, simple simple uh, um, creation and then just print ln hello world dot greet so see we have applied a script also this is more like a script now so we started uh, from something you know a java code for just printing um, groovy and for that we did all those uh, things which were mandatory in java and we came down to you know say one third of what we have done in java so java is groovy groovy is java and the flat learning curve especially for the developers of java because they are aware of java they uh, they do not want or we do, we do not tell them that okay you are adding something to java but you are you are curtailing something from java that is quite easy and you start from the straight java syntax then you move on to a groovy or groovier syntax as you feel comfortable uh, depending upon your requirement 90% java code is groovy code only that means that you can in most changes rename dot java to dot groovy and it is going to work absolutely fine native syntax for list and maps these are the common gotchas for java to groovy you have a native syntax for list and maps java array initializers are not supported but list can be easily uh, utilized and the inner class definitions are not supported yet. these are some um, aspects which you which you should know before jumping to groovy so hope this uh, gives you a basic idea of groovy and uh, the buzzword groovy and why we use it and what are the important aspects of groovy thank you so much take care